Hello to all my friends and family and welcome, welcome to Jim's 5am club. As you can see it's uh, another overcast day. It's been an overcast uh, summer in fact. I heard the weather bureau uh, last night say that uh, for the past three or four weeks it's been raining uh, non-stop or overcast and lightly drizzling and it's been the wettest month for well over six years. So, uh, so much, <laughs> so much for Sydney summers. It's not quite as uh, spectacular as a Greek summer. But uh, let's go on a walk and talk. I'd like to wish everybody a happy new year, a happy 2021. And so far the year's gotten off to a, a great start. We're all healthy, we're happy. And we're on holidays. What more do you want? Anyway, I just want to uh, extend this uh, this 5 a.m. club and talk about a book summary that I uh, talked about a little bit earlier. And I've uh, come across a term which I've uh, which quite a few other people have used, and I've seen uh, written a number of in a number of places. And I didn't, I wasn't quite sure where it all uh, came from. But there's an author who wrote a book called. Uh, 168 hours and I was always wondering what this what is this 168 hours all about but it's a very simple uh, topic a very simple concept but it's also a concept which is quite powerful especially from a time management perspective and the author basically um, highlights the fact that regardless of who you are regardless of your age your health your capabilities, um, your station in life, we all have one thing in common, and that is we've all got the same amount of time allocation. And 168 hours basically, uh, basically just means the number of hours that we have in a week. So if it takes 24 hours a day and multiply it by seven, you get 168. So what the author is saying is that we all have the same amount of time but what differenti differentiates us, what separates us from each other, is what we do in each of those hours, or in each of those weeks. And she also makes a, a very powerful point that uh, people always say that they don't have enough time. They always say that we don't, we don't have enough time, don't have enough time, and yet in the same week, some people will do an amazing amount of work, an ama amazing amount of added value and create magic. And other people will just go from coffee shop to coffee shop and lament another week wasted in their lives. So what this book's all about is a, a time, a, time uh, a call to action on uh, time management. And it's basically showing us and giving us some life hacks on how to make the most and optimize the time that you have available to you. Because the author says very clearly, we all have enough, enough time to build the life that we want. So don't think that you haven't got enough time, you've got plenty of time. But the next thing that she said is tremendously profound and powerful. She said that um, our life is a mosaic of repeated patterns over 168 hours. So what we do habitually every week, week in, week out, what we do every day, we basically determine what we achieve in our lives. So the big question is, what do we do in those 168 hours? What do I do? What do you do? Are we doing the right thing? Are we doing the things that are going to get us closer to our goals? closer to our dreams or are they just going to be time wasting hours that we that we all just look back on and say I had all this time and I did nothing with it so the author then talks about the fact that each single hour needs to contribute to a source of joy a source of joy for you so the way we understand what that source of joy is is that we need to have a dreams list. 
We need to know what our dreams are, what our goals are, what we're striving to achieve. Because once you know what you're striving to achieve, then you can assess. You can assess whether or not the, the things that you're doing, the actions that you're taking, where you're spending your time is uh, going to give you the biggest and best bang for your buck. So the author also talks about the importance of following through on everything and anything that we say because it's all about personal integrity. At the end of the day we're accountable and responsible, responsible for our lives and the only way we can be accountable and responsible is to follow through to make promises and keep promises, especially the ones that we make to ourselves. It doesn't matter about the promises you make to everybody else. Let's start with the promises we make to ourselves because they are the key, they are the key promises that we have. So uh, the author also says something else that I learned over, over my life as well, that uh, many excuses and emergencies that people talk about are broadly foreseeable. You know, turning up late, getting caught in traffic, all of those things, all of those excuses are basically, you know, feeble, weak excuses. Just learn to look, just learn to leave much, much earlier to get to where you want to get to 15 minutes before time. Now, don't leave home with a target of getting there on time, to work on time. You need to be getting there at least 15 minutes before the, the time that you've said you're going to get there. So, um, and the other thing that they say, the author says, which is quite powerful and profound, is that the world is not going to let you stick to your priorities. The world is always going to throw a spanner in the works. It's always going to do something. Somebody's going to do something to divert, to distract, and to take you away from your priorities. So be aware of that and just, just know that the world is not going to contribute and help you with your priorities, but you must also not let, not let your weaknesses, don't let you be the weakness to contribute to your problems. Um, so whatever you do, stack, stack the odds in your favor and don't things don't allow things to uh, to be um, you know to be open to just circumstance because um, you can control you can control the things that you can control is what the author is saying 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 here in the book but also it's important to stand as close as you can to the fairy godmother so uh, I guess that's basically it it's a powerful book. And the book basically gives us five steps. The first step is to log where you spend your time. Now keep a log for a week or two of every single task you do and where you spend your time. And then you can go through the, your, your time log and work out uh, where, where your time spent. And then you can assess whether or not that time is spent wisely. Is it going to help you get to where you want to get to? Or is it just wasted? Wasted on television, wasted on coffee breaks, wasted on smoking, or wasted on stuff that's not going to, uh, to help you um, kick the goals you want to kick. Um, the other thing that the author talks about is you need to go through and assess um, what your key, um, key skills are so that you're, you're uh, working on things that uh, are uh, based on your strengths and you can learn to uh, just delegate, eliminate or minimize the other things in your life um, by, by knowing where you're spending your time and knowing your dreams list and your goals. Then you can have a look at where you're spending your time and then work out, you know, is there somebody else in a better position that I can delegate this task to? You know, is it making the most of the skills that I have? because there is always somebody else who's much happier to do a particular task than what you are and who's better suited to doing it. You know, don't waste your time doing things that are not going to create significant amounts of value and are not going to propel you 
to where you want to be and get you closer to the dreams that you want. Anyway, I think I'll finish up there. So thank you very much for joining me on this other episode of Jim's 5am Club. I'll finish off with a positive affirmation. I'm alive, I'm well, and I feel absolutely great. To my friends and family, stay connected, stay relevant, stay reasonable, and most importantly, let's all understand that we all have an allocation of time, 168 hours a week to be exact, of which, of which we've got time for sleeping, depending on how much you sleep, we've got time for, uh, for, for working and we've got time for everything else and there's plenty of time, there's at least 10 hours a day that you can allocate to doing things that are going to help you make the most of your life. Anyway, that's enough for today and I'll look forward to catching up with you tomorrow from a different location with a different message. Thank you once again and it's just so peaceful, just so relaxing walking along the beach at uh, sunset and uh, we'll see where it takes us. Once again, happy 2021. Yasas. I just hope that we can uh, continue this journey through uh, 2021 and I'm hoping, I'm hoping to clock up a thousand vlogs by my 61st first birthday, which is May the 27th. See how we go. God willing, yasas, and we'll chat again. Bye for now. Yeah. <laughs>